wondered, I, I know you've touched on it, but can you take me to the battle, immerse me in the sights and sounds of the battle for at least a few minutes, or a minute, uh, and describe the chaos and yeah. what the experience was like for the anonymous fighters uh, and the carnage afterwards? Yeah. Well, you know, a warfare at this time was was really personal in a way that it isn't you know, it's, warfare is always personal, but it was, you know, it was close, the engagements were then. And, um, and so the Americans were dug in across the width of the Charlestown Peninsula, some of them in the redoubt, some of them behind the breastwork, some of them along the rail fence, and then even those others behind uh, the this, this stone wall uh, that Stark had created. And, you know, here they are, they're, they're behind there, and it's hot, and they've been digging they're sweating. Those in the redoubt have been there since uh, the, the previous night. They're hungry. They're really, really thirsty. And they're scared because they're watching 2,000 British regulars make their way across Boston Harbor, being rowed on this beautiful sunny day, their bayonets glinting in the sun, as Thousands of civilians are watching from the roofs and steeples of Boston, from the hills, the surrounding towns. As all of this unfolds, we have a wonderful later letter from uh, British General John Burgoyne describing uh, the, 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 the jangled nerves that these, everyone had, the sense of anticipation as they're watching, you know, what the fate of the English-speaking world may be decided in what transpires next. Uh, how leads his men up in uh, uh, what was described as a straggling line as the the uh, British make their way up up the uh, up the, the the hill towards the the Americans dug in uh, this is not uh, a, a golf course they are going over uh, it's full of rocks it's long uh, hay that's basically in many it's up to their their waists and it's it's uh, lined with with uh, very irritating fences everywhere so that you know this formation upon which the the British strategy is based gets stopped whenever they have to pull apart uh, these fences and continue on and the Americans are just sitting there waiting and so this is all going as the British are sweating their way up the hill in their woolen uniforms. Uh, it's not until they're 50, even 30 yards from the American line. You know, and at that stage, people can hear what people are saying. Can you imagine the anxiety, the tension, as all of this is, on, you know, with just the si sounds of drums and fifes as they're making their way up, and then within 30 yards, the musket balls are unleashed uh, from from the American muskets. This this it's described by by some as as uh, you know like like uh, popcorn popping and 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 it's clouds of smoke as the British soldiers begin to fall. And there are the Americans, and you know these people are not professional soldiers. They have no one has been in a situation like this. Some of them have been in the skirmishes at Lexington and Concord, but those were moving. You know, those were moving from house to house. Here, they're dug in, you know, with nowhere to go. And what everyone is terrified of is the awesome spectacle of a British bayonet charge, where the tactic is you fire, and out of the smoke, out of the British smoke come these big British soldiers with their high hats, making them seem even larger, with their bayonets thrust before them, charging and screaming. You know, it's enough to terrify anyone. However, because of that initial volley, they are driven back. Uh, the, the British officers are very upset that the soldiers stop to fire rather than prepare and do that bayonet charge. They're forced to do it over again. And remember, the, the, uh, the Americans know they do not have much gunpowder. Uh, and, and it's frustrating because behind them, up on Bunker Hill, they can see hundreds, if not thousands, of their compatriots basically just milling around, not coming to their aid. And so they're going, what the heck is going on here? And many of them are saying, are we being left to die? The second charge occurs. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, the British are staggered and come back. And then now, uh, 
everyone on the American side knows we have hardly any gunpowder left. And here they come again. And the one added factor is while all of this is happening, the town of Charlestown is burning. It's an inferno, sending this pall of smoke across the battlefield. And it's, it's this bright form of heat. And as one British officer would say, it was the hottest battle any of them. And these, some of these guys were grizzled veterans of the European wars from the Seven Years' War. It was the hottest. It was not only the hottest temperature from the fires of Charlestown in the summer day, uh, it was also the hottest fire any of them had experienced. And so up they go for that final charge. And on this final one, the, 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 the British uh, that are approaching the redoubt are, are shouting out, conquer or die, conquer or die. And finally, when they finally make it through and are now on the, 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 uh, at the, the base of the redoubt, they've got their swords in one hand, their, their muskets in the other, and up they come. By now, uh, the Americans are throwing rocks because they've run out of gunpowder. They pick up their, their barrels of their guns and begin to use them as clubs as the British come over. And the British cannot believe. Never, it's, it's contrary to military, uh, usual military protocol for people to remain in a redoubt as that's coming over. Usually you're long gone, but there they are. And so in the smoke, inside the redoubt is blinding. It's dark. You can't see a thing. And they are punching. They're stabbing as, as, uh, as Americans flow out and just run uh, a pell-mell uh, towards the, the neck in the safety of Cambridge. And so all of this is happening. It's ca no one knows what is going on. They're terrified. Uh, and um, you know this is the be turning point in which what had begun as at, uh, supposedly an ideologically driven thing is goes from a few skirmishes to out and out war.